Now I will give a talk about part two, in vivo tracing techniques. In vivo tracing techniques include the following. One, absorption, distribution, excretion of the substance. Two, radionuclide dilution method. Third, autoradiography. Fourth, determination of organ function. Five, radionuclide image. First, absorption, distribution, and excretion of substance. When various substance, including physiological substance and drugs, enter the body, they usually undergo digestion, absorption, distribution, transformation, and excretion. Radionuclide tracing technology can provide the most effective method and means to understand the dynamic change of substance in vivo, the influence of various factors on the metabolic process of substance in vivo, and the abnormal changes in the stage of the disease. The study of absorption distribution and excretion of substance is often used in pharmacology, pharmacodynamics, and toxicology of drugs. It has important value in drug screening, route of administration, and dosage form selection. Two, determination of organ function. It refers to a function stage of organ or tissue. After dynamic observation, it can give quantitative result and provide function evaluation for medical research and clinical diagnosis by radionuclide tracing technology. Radioactive drugs are dynamically distributed in the organ and the tissue, consent after they are introduced into the body. The process of the characteristic increasing and decline in the organ consent can be observed by radio detective instrument, which shows a certain curve for. By selecting appropriate mathematical models to analyze the curve qualitatively and quantitatively, the result reflect the certain function state of the organ can be obtained as the nature and degree of functional abnormality can be judged. The third, radionuclide imaging. Radionuclide imaging is a nuclear medicine technology based on radionuclide tracing principle and observing radionuclide or its labelled compounds within the body's metabolism distribution and obtain tissue functional image in vitro. Radionuclide or its labelled compounds are used to obtain functional and structural image of tissue or organ in vitro. Continuous imaging in a short time or intermittent imaging in a certain time range can observe the function and the morphology of organ simultaneously. It can not only show the morphology, location, size, structure change of organ and the tissue, but also can perform dynamic imaging and quantitative analysis. The process of radionuclide imaging. In nuclear medicine imaging, radiopharmacutics are taken internally, for example, intravenously or orally. Then, external detectors, for example, gamma cameras, they capture and form image from the radiation emitted by the radiopharmacutics. This process is unlike a diagnostic X-ray where eternal radiation is passed through the body to form the image. That means X-ray, D 
detection and the gamma ray detection is totally different. Principium of radionuclide image. Different radiopharmacutics. This radiopharmacutics we call the imaging agents have their own special distribution and metabolic rules in vivo. They can selectively gather in specific organ, tissue, or lesions to form a certain concentration difference between the radioactive distribution of radiopharmacutics and adjacent tissues. Radionuclide in imaging agents can emit a certain penetrating gamma ray, which can be detected by the radiomeric measuring instruments in vitro. The difference of the radioactivity concentration was recorded to show the changes of shape, location, size, and the function of organ, tissue, or lesions in vitro. Application of radionuclide imaging. First, it can provide a functional and structural change of the organ and tissue at the same time, which can help to the early diagnosis of the disease. Second, it can be used for quantitative analysis. The third, it has high specificity. The fourth, safe and non-invasive, conforming to the physical condition. The fifth, the resolution of the organizational structures is less than other imaging methods. Classification of radioisotopal imaging. First, static and dynamic imaging. Second, planar or tomographic imaging. The third, early and delay imaging. The fourth, positive and negative imaging. The fifth, rest and stress imaging. The last one, single photon imaging and positron imaging. So we first talk the static and dynamic imaging. Like this picture is by a thyroid gland scanning. It's static image. And the left is a liver, liver scanning. It's a static scanning. Therefore, these two pictures actually is a kidney dynamic imaging and a renal gram. We call it is dynamic imaging. Radioactive drugs are dynamically distributed in the organ and the tissue, consent after they are introduced into the body. The process of the characteristic increased and declines the organ consent can be observed by the detective instrument which shows a certain curve form, like a kidney we call the renal gram. By selecting appreciate mathematically model to analyze the curve of qualitatively and quantitatively, the result reflecting the certain function stage of organ can be obtained and the nature and the degree of function abnormality can be judged. Static dynamic imaging also shows some regional image. For example, this is a pelvis bone scanning. And this one is a whole body bone scanning. Regional imaging and whole body imaging. And this we call static or dynamic image. And this, the second, is planar and the tomographic image. Like this picture is planar whole body bone scanning. And the lower part is a tomographic image. Actually, it's about the heart. And this shows how the tomographic image formed, like a different section. And the third is early and delay image. 
left one is 10 minutes scanning, and the right one is two hours later scanning. So TetraGram 99M may be double phase imaging for parathyroid gland. The third is early and delay imaging it shows uh, the legs. First is early artery perfusion imaging. Then we have the blood pool image after five minutes. And then after three hours, you may get the delayed bone imaging. The fourth is positive and negative imaging. Images of F18 toba and Broman 76 uptake as a level of the street term in a control subject. A drug negative patient with early Parkinson's disease and a patient with advanced Parkinson's disease uptake of both tracers is asymmetrically decreased in patients with Parkinson's disease and less in the posterior than in anterior street term. In the patient with early Parkinson's disease, the decrease of the bromine 76 FECBT uptake is more severe than the F18 TOBA uptake reduction in the left posterior putamen and in the right putamen. In the thyroid gland imaging, this result often called hot spots, which is a focal increase of radio accumulation or a general increase in radio accumulation throughout the physical logical system. Some disease process result in the exclusion of tracer, result in the appearance of the cold spots. Many tracer complex have been developed to image or treat many different organs, gland, and the physiological process. And the fifth, the rest and the stress image, actually is for heart. So you can do this myocardial perfusion image in the rest stage, no exercise, just to take a rest, you take the myocardial perfusion image to know whether the patient have the, the heart of the patient is chemia. Or you can let the patient do exercise. We call the stress method. Then you do the myocardial perfusion imaging to see whether the patient shows the ischemia phenomenon because the exercise. We call the rest a stress image. So finally, is a single photon imaging or positron imaging. SPECT use gamma camera data from many projections and can be reconstructed in different plans. Uh, for example, MDP can be preferentially taken up by the bone by chemically attaching the tetraterm 99M to MDP. Radioactivity can be transported and attached to the bone where the hydroxy are tight for imaging. Any in physiological function, such as due to the fracture in the bone, will usually mean increased concentration of the tracer. Positron imaging tomography PET use a co-inside detection to image functional process. For example, F18 FDG. FDG is similar as a glucose. The image could reflect the metabolism of glucose within the cell. Malignant tumor will uptake much more F18, FDG. So we can know it's a high metabolism. Okay, that's all for this part. Thank you.